if you think that the Zizzle Arcade 1-Ups at Games Toy Shock well-played arcade were the first attempt by commercial companies to bring three-quarter scale pinball action to your home, well, you would be mistaken. This actually was attempted back in 1977 by a company called Wico in partnership with Sears to bring you the big top pinball machine. This cost-effective solid-state pinball machine measured 63 inches tall, 43 and a half inches long, and 20 and a half inches wide. Just slightly, slightly larger than an At Games Legends Pinball digital pinball machine. Some of the features included on this pinball machine are skill shots, spinners, action rings, top and bottom rollover buttons, electric ball return, dual chime sound whenever scoring, electric flippers, electronic tilt, three bullseye targets, two action kickers, automatic ball count, and game over, and an LED scoreboard. And since I cover a lot of three-quarter scale home arcades and pinball machines on this channel, I figured why not? Why not pick up one of the OG originals, check it out, and also, this is going to be a bit of a restoration project. Back in the day when this machine came out, you'll notice that the assembly instructions kind of mirror what you see from the modern day commercial virtual pinball machines. Everything was uh, pre-assembled in the box, your back box, your play field, and all you had to do was, uh, you know, screw in the cabinet, screw in the legs, connect some wires, and you are up and running. Of course, with this being a mechanical pinball machine, there are plenty of additional information in the original instruction manual that does tell you how to service the machine, change things out, as well as make adjustments for gameplay, etc. And here's a reprinted copy of the original 1977 Sears and Wico Big Top advertisement flyer that they would use to market this product back in the day, showing you all the different specs and gameplay features of this pinball machine. Pretty cool thing to have. I'm definitely, once I finish restoring this thing, going to stick this in a frame above the machine on the wall. As we dive inside the machine to show you what their genius was like back in 1977, trying to come up with a, what you call a home grade version of a pinball machine, you'll notice here that all people had to do was bolt in their back box, just like they do on these commercial virtual pinball machines today, and connect several wires to the motherboards, and you were up and running. If you remove the bolts from the lock bar, you're able to then pop the lock bar off just like any other pinball machine. You could remove the side rails if you want, if not, they're raised up to provide a lip for the plexiglass cover. That's right, because this was a home pinball machine, it didn't come with glass. This looks like the original plexi cover, and as you can see, after all these years, it's been scratched to holy hell. As part of my restoration, I'll be replacing this completely. I might go glass. After the plexi and the ball return shield covers are removed, you can easily then lift up the playfield, and you'll notice that there's not a lot going on in here. Very basic, simple home pinball machine from back in the day. But I love the fact that it still included a real tilt ball. It's almost shocking how nearly empty this cabinet is, but as you can see, all the uh, wiring was super simple for people. All they had to do was connect cables when originally assembling the machine in order to get their flipper buttons to work, get their ball launcher button to work, as well as to get their start reset button to work and plenty of easy access to get to the bottom of the play field in order to service the machine and all of the mechanical parts when it comes to all of the slingshots, spinners, etc. Back in the 1970s, taking the family and heading to the circus was one of the biggest and most popular entertainment destinations for American families, so it's no surprise that we saw a number of pinball machines that were circus-themed from back in the day. And as you can see, if you brought this pinball machine home to your kids, provided they weren't scared of clowns, man, they probably fell in love looking at this thing. And maybe some of you did as well, looking at all this beautiful, classic 1970s pinball artwork all over the back glass, as well as all over the play field. I personally love stuff like this. When the pinball machine is powered on, you'll notice that uh, the entire back glass is not lit up. What they did back then was just highlight or light up the main areas that they wanted you to focus on, including the four-digit alphanumeric scoreboard, your ball numbers one, two, and three, the game over sign, as well as the big top logo and the clown and tiger faces. There were about eight light bulbs. These ones have a purple color to them, so that's pretty nice. Gives it a nice look on the play field when it lights it up, and it lights it up just enough, maybe not enough, but just enough 
back in the day to uh, give you a nice pinball experience in your dark arcade and gaming room. Let's check out some gameplay and then I'm going to show you what I need to restore or my plans on what I'm going to restore on this machine to get it working efficiently. Okay, some of the things that I'll be working on. You'll notice that the electronic ball launcher isn't really working, and that's because it's jammed. There is supposed to be a metal plate that prevents the screw from touching the wall. And that metal plate has broken off. So all I need to do is put in an L bracket here to prevent that screw from getting stuck against the rail. That's all that it's happening. Once it's released uh, from the wall, it'll work just fine with the button press. So we just got to make sure we get a new back on top of here, right there, that keep that from going all the way back against the front wall of the pinball machine. You'll notice the machine was sitting cockeyed. Well, that's because the leveling feet are on the wrong level, plus the leveling feet are old and jacked up. Uh, three of them look like the one on the left. They're all rusted. I have replacement feet already, and we'll get this thing leveled out and uh, put in new feet on this machine. The pinball legs all need sanded down and repainted and cleaned up. I'm actually thinking about going blue on the pinball legs. I think that'll really pop with the blue highlights in the back box and on the machine, give it more of a circusy feel, and we might change the chrome from silver chrome to blue. After we paint the legs and clean that up, uh, we're going to replace all the leg bolts. I have brand new leg bolts. All of these bolts are old, rusted, some of them are stripped, etc. From far away, the pinball machine side art might look okay, but actually, you know, back in the 70s, guys, this is when they painted the artwork on the machines. There was no vinyl wrap, and as you can see, everything here needs touch-ups, cleaned up, etc. Might do some sanding, might do some painting. I might put this same artwork on here, but in a vinyl form after I sand it down, or I might use some stenciling, and with some stencils, just repaint this artwork on myself after we clean up these very, very old boards all over the back box and side of the cabinet. For a 45 year old pinball cabinet, it's actually not in horrible, horrible shape. Everything can be salvaged. Everything on here can be restored. When it comes to the side artwork, again, I could go with a vinyl or I could actually use some stenciling and just repaint and be very careful and put these red and white stripes back on, looking all nice and shiny and tight. As you can see, there's lots of stains and scratches. I don't know what's going on with the red paint on this side. I don't know if someone tried to do their own touch-ups and they screwed up back in the day. And of course, all the chrome trim, we're going to paint and polish and get that all cleaned up. All of the rubbers on the slingshots, the flippers, etc. are worn or they're dirty, stained, gross, or they're loosey-goosey. Some, some look a little rotted, so we're going to replace all those. The mechanical plunger needs a whole new spring, as well as it does need a whole new rubber tip on the mechanical plunger. Those will be easy to fix and replace as well. I have those new parts already, because that plunger tip is rotted away. On the interior of the machine, we're going to do some touch-up painting and cleaning of all the wooden rails, etc. surrounding the playfield, as well as we do need to do a deep cleaning of the playfield itself. I got several different pinball waxes and polishes. We'll see what we can use on this surface without ruining the artwork, and we'll get the inside all cleaned up. Why did I buy this thing? Well, I like weird, wacky stuff. I like classic pinball machines. You guys all know that if you've been following the channel. Also, I've always wanted to try and restore something, so why not something like this? Only cost me a few hundred bucks for the machine, and it should only cost me maybe a few hundred bucks to get this thing cleaned up, looking good, and running efficiently as if it was almost brand new out of the box from 45 years ago. A lot of the stuff that I need to do is some pretty basic stuff that anyone can figure out how to do, as long as they take their time, do their research, and be a little patient. And although this pinball machine doesn't have the best gameplay experience possible, I think, even if I do fix it up and get it running new, I mean, it's not the most exciting, thrilling pinball game of all time, I think it'll end up fitting in nicely with my three-quarter scale home arcade and pinball collection, as well as I could always sell it when I'm done for a big profit 
to some kind of collector out there and end up making some money off of it when I'm done as well. A lot of the stuff I need is already coming in. I already got some replacement parts showing up with more on the way. So I'm excited to do this project. Hopefully you guys will come back for part two when I show you what this thing looks like when it's completed. Leave me your feedback below. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up on the way out. And as always, my dudes, thank you for subscribing.